all of these kids who are following like iconic, powerful, influential, popular Arab people, whether it's musicians or artists or just like fashion icons. I mean, that's dispelling the myth real time as well. And you can't propagandize to people who are like young because they're seeing it. Okay, th this irony is just <laughs> destroying me. So there's this racist stereotype that people believe all Arab people are terrorists. Well, she's sitting across from a literal terrorist sympathizer. <laughs> <laughs> Which I, I agree, it's a terrible, terrible stereotype. But when you sit across mm -hmm. from someone who is a literal terrorist sympathizer, it kind of plays into that stereotype a bit. I love that you will not back down because there is so much media backlash every time. It's like the New York Post writes an article about every tweet that you make. I mean, that's how much in the spotlight your your opinions are. And it's, and it's nuts just how much people really, really are incited by, by what you say about this. And it's super important. I mean, when you look at what you were actually a, saying, this is the most amazing thing about it because the headlines are all just like running with, Oh, uh, wait, wait, was that a, like a giant Freudian slip or what? Did you, what'd she say? Well, I think she, she meant to say inspired, but she said incited, <laughs> like, Oh, <laughs> incitement maybe. to violence. Maybe. Yeah, yeah. Yeah. So I want you to hear how she describes her, tw her tweets that the New York Post is, is reporting on. And then I sent you some pictures, Adam, after she describes to it, bring can, up the tweets. Okay, yeah. Just good. so you can see the tweets. Pretty sure I've say, seen these tweets. And right. They are so like, very, yeah, I mean, inciting. Yeah. It could be like, uh, okay. It's a very interesting way of categorizing Abby Martin. Sure. Yes. And it's super important. I mean, when you look at what you are actually saying, this is the most amazing thing about it because the headlines are all just like running with, oh, uh, you know, Mia Khalifa says this and that. And then when you actually like dig into the article and see what is it that you're saying that's so controversial, it's actually completely not controversial, complete factual statements like, I want to go back to this post. Okay, so before she brings up the one she's going to bring up as an example, she just said the New York Post is, you know, they're, they're commenting, they're reporting on all your tweets. And when you look into them, you know, they're completely true. That's what Abby Martin says. When you look into these controversial tweets, they're completely true. Okay. So yeah. uh, why don't we bring up some of these tweets to see uh just see just, these completely true tweets that she's referring to here. Just normal tweets that you know anyone might yeah. tweet out. Right. We're just uh we're just normal men here making normal tweets, apparently, according to uh, Abby Martin. Uh, so I got the the I think I've got the four up. Which one do you want first? The four or the it doesn't matter. Okay. You read the four first. So there you go. There's a, here's a collection. So if you notice, the date of these is October 7th. Right. Okay. So this means this is as Hamas is attacking Israel and killing okay. people, raping people, everything. So let's see some of these tweets. Let's read some of these tweets together. So uh, here's the first one. Uh, Mia tweets out, can someone please tell the freedom fighters in Palestine to flip their phones and film horizontal? Oh, so she's worried about the way they're live streaming the killings. Yeah. She wants them to be more cinematic. Right, right. This is uh, some of those great, truthful, inciting tweets, Abby, huh? <laughs> is this wow. the tweet you're talking about here? Yeah, you know, when, when you film your war crimes, you always need to film them in horizontal mode. That's what's yes. most important. Yes. Yeah. You'd hate to upload the wrong format for your war crimes yeah no it's true it's true um and part of the reason is that she said it's kind of cut off but she says i can't believe the zionist apartheid regime is being brought down by guerrilla fighters and fake gucci shirts the biopics of these moments better reflect that hmm. so she wants the movie to be made about you know hamas people uh, killing, raping, kidnapping civilians. She thinks that's, you know, a good thing, a funny thing, I guess, you know, to comment on as it's happening. But Interesting. Uh, she also says, oh, okay. So she was dropped 
from some company that she was working with for this. Right. Um, and she said in response to her being fired from her job, she said, the most press you ever get on me for your shitty little company. You quite literally couldn't pay me to post about it publicly before I thought it was so bad. It's free Palestine and Pal until Palestine is free. So this is on, I believe, on October 8th. So she's saying it's free Palestine until Palestine is free, meaning that therefore the actions of what Hamas did that day were justified because, you know, they can do anything until they're free. Okay. Okay. And then obviously she says America supports and funds apartheid. This is on October 7th. That's the question. D the Tom, is it Tom Dillon? That's the question the other podcaster was asking Abby that I was anxious to hear an answer for. Which was what? The, what is apartheid? How are they? Oh, what is an apartheid? apartheid right. Yeah, yeah. yeah. Mm -hmm. So, mm -hmm. um, she also posted a picture, right, of Hamas people in the back of a truck. You see, they have guns. They appear to be shooting a police officer, an Israeli police officer, through his window or something. And uh, she tweeted this out and said, "This is a Renaissance painting." right yeah yeah okay uh nice very nice uh she also tweeted out she pinned this she pinned this on october 7th she said this is wall this is all the people are being killed massacred this tweet apparently got at least eighty four thousand likes which is horrific um she says if you can look at the situation of palestine and not be on the side of the palestinians then you're on the wrong side of apartheid and history will show that in time is on October seventh. Okay, you you. Uh, I think she's wrong about that. How about you? Yeah, I'm gonna say that's a big wrong. It's a big fail. Right. Uh, it's a big L right there. That uh, while people are being kidnapped, raped, murdered, kidnapped, to uh, throw that out there, not at non agreeing with that. Uh, she also on October eighth, she criticized Kylie Jenner. Kylie Jenner said something, you know, she made some tweet about, you know, praying for supporting uh, Israel. And she said that Kylie Jenner is, a, is an idiot for doing this on October 8th. Uh, somebody tweeted out completely before any of the violence started, nothing to do with po politics. Someone just randomly tweeted out, did anyone else feel the vibe shift just now? I'm so serious, by the way. And uh, Mila quote tweeted that once the killing started and said, Zionist settlers and occupied land and stolen homes this morning. Okay. What's that? Yeah. Uh, she also said, this is on October 7th. She said, any cel celebrity supporting Israel is just doing it for the money. And she also said, regarding the holding the phones horizontally, she said, I just want to make sure this 4K footage of my people breaking down the walls of the open air prison they've been forced out of their homes and into so we have good options for the history books that write about how they freed themselves from apartheid that's that ain't gonna happen that's not how it works yeah yeah okay so those are those are some of uh she had more obviously but those are some of the plethora of insane, disgusting, horrific, vile tweets that Mia Khalifa put up on October 7th, October 8th. She's explicitly uh, defending Hamas. She's explicitly cheering on Hamas. To my knowledge, she has not at any point uh, said, she didn't do a Norman Finkelstein. She didn't say, oh, I didn't know how bad it was. You know, she just stood by all of this stuff. These are all, these are the tweets that the New York Post reported on. These are the tweets that Abby Martin, um, who I guess is just a horrible person in this context, uh, said were, you know, true or was cheering on these tweets and cheering on Mia's, you know, not backing down from this. So either Abby Martin, I guess, agrees with this or is so ignorant that she has no clue that she said all this stuff, even though this is all the stuff that made all the, the newspaper articles she was talking about. We should talk about the giant irony here too, since Hamas is a, a fundamentalist religious sect of 
Islam. How do they feel about pornography and and pornographers? Yeah, they're not they're not uh they're not in favor of it. Right. And and Mia Khalifa is a is a porn actress. Yes. She does so pornography, yes. How how would she be treated in the Gaza Strip? Well, as a of... very fabulous gay man on Twitter said today, um, he said, I support Israel because I'd rather be getting head in Tel Aviv than getting beheaded in Gaza. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, she'd likely be made an example of relatively yeah. quickly. Yeah. And well, it's, and it's also it's very strange too, because so and we're gonna find out through the course of this conversation. Uh, Mia is uh, Lebanese. She's from Beirut, I believe. And um, she does not like Hezbollah. She she hates Hezbollah, which makes sense, obviously. And she, I, I believe she's actually banned uh, from returning to her own home country because of her pornography. So I don't know why she doesn't also see Hamas through that same lens. Well, because she feels like they're doing her bidding. I guess. They're, do, they're doing yeah. the things that she would like to do herself if she had the ability to do them. Right. That's why people latch on to these fundamentalist groups because they feel like they can get something out of it. Yeah, yeah. Regardless of the fact that they themselves would be beheaded were they forced to live under Hamas or Hezbollah or any one of these fundamentalist Islamic regimes. Yeah. I mean, I'm guessing she just hates... That is what you're saying. And then also, you know, she just hates Israel so much that it doesn't matter. Her just her brain is melted on the subject matter. So, right. so okay. So those are the tweets. Those were some of the, the controversial tweets that Mia put out. Um, let's see what tweet Abby, you know, Abby's gonna ask her about, right? Let's see what kind of crazy tweet that Abby's gonna show her audience to say is like, listen. This is what Mia is being attacked with, right? And it's no big deal. It's no big deal. It's a truck tweet, right? Obviously, she's going to bring that up. Well, we'll see. I mean, maybe she could. Maybe it would be very interesting. It could be a hard conversation where she says, "Listen, you said all this crazy stuff. Mm -hmm. You know, I don't necessarily agree with all this stuff. You know, why did you why did you tweet this, right? Yeah. What What was the backlash like? I mean, maybe. Abby Martin is a journalist. So. Yeah, hard hitting, hard hitting right. journalist. Hard hitting <laughs> journalist doesn't just listen to the regime propaganda you know right didn't you say she worked for russia today listen <laughs> listen okay <laughs> see what is it that you're saying that's so controversial it's actually completely not controversial complete factual statements like i want to go back to this post during the sheikh jarrah ethnic cleansing in 2021 because i think that this really just symbolizes how deranged um, the the press can be when it's trying to demonize someone. You simply posted a photo of you drinking a bottle of wine, like an old bottle of wine from France. Looked good. It looked awesome. It was a great photo. And you just were like, "My this wine is older than your apartheid state." So uh, that's a that's a spicy tweet. She's gonna go to. <laughs> That's the tweet. That's the so out, out of all the tweets that I just read to you that we showed to you, for some reason, I guess dishonesty. Abby brings up a tweet from two years ago that has not at all what's got her into all this trouble that currently, you know, she's in. This is the hard hitting. She's like, you tweet a lot of really hard hitting stuff, and what I admire is that you don't take any of it back. Yeah. Like this wine tweet from yeah. 2021. Yep. This is it. This is the <laughs> big tweet. You know, the big boom. Dropping some some bombs tweet, right? Right here. Well, I mean, if she's going for spicy, I feel like we just pulled up five, five tweets that are at least a thousand times spicier than this. Yes, yes. So uh, Abby goes on to say how some people were... We're, not, we're criticizing this because apparently the wine she was drinking was like uh, was a year that it's like French wine that was from the years that the Nazis occupied France. And so they were like saying, oh, my God, did you intend you like intentionally chose a wine where the Nazis controlled France because you're like pro-Nazi or something, which, you know, I think is 
silly. I don't think that was probably the thought process. Um, but this to me, it should be just really clear right out of the gate that Abby Martin is a dishonest actor. She is not a real journalist. She is a propagandist and a liar because I don't believe for a second Abby Martin doesn't know the tweets that got Mia in trouble. And if you were not familiar with that information, which a lot of people aren't because not everyone's termini on, terminally online like we are and a lot of people listening, a lot of people probably listen to Abby Martin they are not familiar with Mia Khalifa, the porn star, or any of the controversial things she said. And this is the only fucking tweet that Abby Martin, the dishonest per person pretending to be a journalist, brings up to her own audience. So if you're in her audience, you would have no clue that Mia said all this insane crap. You think, oh, she just said she just criticized Israel being an apartheid state and the media went after her. That's all you think if you listen to Abby Martin. Yeah, you're gonna, you're totally gonna have a deceptive view of the whole situation. Yes, it's insane. This is so wildly dishonest. Like, there's no defense. There is no defense of this level of, of just intentional dishonesty. Yeah, yeah. She lost a job over those tweets. I think it was a job for Playboy. Yeah, she lost some Playboy job, and she lost some other job for some other company. Well, I'm sure it didn't make a difference. She probably makes most of her money off of OnlyFans. Anyway, she does. So yes. it's not like she got fired. I did see a lot of people trying to play it up like she was going to be destitute after this. And I thought, that ain't, sorry, the world is much more sinister than that. Like right. she's probably ended up making money off of this. And that's oh, yeah. I'm sure getting... a bunch of these, I'm sure, listen, I'm sure people that, a lot of people that subscribe to her on OnlyFans don't give a shit. And I'm sure lots of insane, degenerate, uh, people are like oh actually you know supported her because of this so yeah yeah but abby martin has no excuse obviously yeah why is so, she doing uh, this other than I, that she's a just question. a dishonest hack it i mean to me this really very crystal clear because i was listening to some of the things abby martin says in this conversation i was listening to some of the things she said in the tim dylan conversation and she just she always frames things in a completely one-sided way and I'm kind of used to that. And you're like, okay, that's like a level of bias that I, you know, it's dishonest, but it's like a level of bias you sort of uh, get. But this is so blatant that I just cannot see it as any way than just being an intentional lying, you know, piece of crap. Does she mention that she's a porn actress? I mean, I noticed in her intro, she's glowingly made her sound like an activist, not really a... Um, I don't remember. We'll find out. Look, I'm looking for it. Mm -hmm. And holy shit, did minds explode where you actually had Avi Mayer, who is essentially like a spokesperson for the IDF. He's the editor in chief of the Jerusalem Post. And he is he's a pretty, you know, he's a pretty high profile Israeli. Well, anyway, she's going to complain about the wine tweet, which we don't need to hear. Doesn't bring up any of the other tweets. So. I, I can't remember who it was, um, but I, I heard a um, I, I saw a transcript of some leaked audio of of someone saying that it's not a left and someone someone on the mm -hmm. Israeli side saying it's not a left and right divide. It's a young and old. The younger generation is is catching on to everything, and we need to do everything we can to stop that. And TikTok was mentioned in all of these platforms that are used to to spread awareness and 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 shine light on all of this. Um, they're terrified of these things. It was Jonathan Greenblatt of the Anti-Defamation League, and it was a leaked audio recording where he actually said, quote, we have a major generational problem. All of the polling I've seen suggests it's not a left-right gap. The issue is young and old. And I think that really, it strikes to the heart of the problem because Israel's losing hold of the narrative that they've been, maintain I mean, they've maintained the narrative for so long because of the collusion with the press. I mean, they're a junior collaborator of the U.S. Empire. They they work in concert with the U.S. corporate media. I mean, so the okay, 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 <laughs> okay. So there was an interesting thing that came out where the ADL guy, you know, made this comment about, you know, it's not the left. You know, the anti the rise of anti semitism doesn't seem to be attached to the left or the right it seems to be a generational thing or also the the rise of anti-israeli ideas um why do you why do you think the the young generation in america 
is a lot more anti-Israeli. Because of the wokeness lens, obviously. They right. see Israel as colonialists. Right. White yeah. colonialists. Yes. Yeah, it's very clear to me. It's mostly because of the woke lens, mostly because of exactly what you said. Also, you know, uh, people tweeted out, and I think Elon Musk retweeted it, where some someone had done research that showed that the amount of anti-Israel, anti-Semitic content was insanely high on TikTok. And they showed that they did some polling data that showed that supposedly, you know, the more TikTok content a person consumed or said that they consumed, the more likely it is that they were very anti-Israel and more likely that they had anti-Semitic attitudes. Yeah, we have the CCP basically beating propaganda to all of our kids, which right. is, I just, look, our Congress is out to lunch on this. I don't understand why they even, what are you doing, Congress? Yeah. What are you doing? Well, maybe this will be the wake up call. Um, one, one hopes. I always said, I said, I think like a year or two years ago, I said, listen, I know a lot of, I know a lot of the far right people, anti-Semitic, but they don't understand the, the, the anti-Semitism on the left is the ticking time bomb that might destroy wokeness. Well, look, we went from <laughs> the, the Jews might destroy wokeness. We went from the fairness doctrine where they yeah. literally had a law in place saying that you had to give equal time to both liberals and conservatives, Republicans and Democrats in mainstream media news, right? Mm -hmm. We mm -hmm. went from that to turning our, our news over to TikTok and the CCP. Yes. What the heck has happened here? Well, it's interesting um, because Abby was saying, listen, these kids, they're not susceptible to the U.S imperial propaganda yeah they're acceptable to the ccp propaganda exactly abby <laughs> what the hell how is this how are you so blind to this look do you, who is more susceptible to propaganda such someone who has a lifetime of experience watching media and seeing propaganda and discerning it from not propaganda or kids oh i'm so glad that you just said that it's so funny that you said that okay because <laughs> you haven't actually seen this conversation I haven't. No, no. Because they're about to go on and say how they're about to go and praise children and say that children have some magical immunity to propaganda. <laughs> the children are uniquely qualified to talk about these sorts of events. Most people on the left, and I'm sad to say this, look, I, I my moral intuitions are very much on the left. I want to help people. Yeah. But so many people on the left are just fundamentally naive about human psychology. <laughs> Just basic human psychology goes mm -hmm. right over their heads. And I have yeah. a feeling we're going to witness a lot of that in this conversation. Oh, if yeah. it is what you're saying it is. Well, we'll see. The U.S. corporate media, like all um, allies of the U.S. empire, they just basically run um, press releases from the IDF and they're just their media stenographers. And so for the longest time up until the advent of social media, Israel's just been able to have this stronghold on like what the talking points are. But as you've seen Palestinians dictate their own reality, that's slipping away more and more. And they are so desperate. I mean, we know that they have war rooms at Tel Aviv University with dozens, probably hundreds, if not thousands of people who are literally employed to correct the record online, whether it's Wikipedia or whatever. We know that Israeli officials try to take down pro-Palestine posts on TikTok and, and Twitter, but it still isn't working, Sarah. I mean, because Palestinians are, are, are showing us real time, like these are the atrocities. This is our life. You can't argue with that. Like, but of course they try, right? They're even grotesquely insinuating that these people are all like, like working as actors and, and all the bait, like the dead babies are like toys. And I mean, it's fucking sick. Oh, so, okay. So the, the part where she talks about the kids not being susceptible to propaganda is later in, in the conversation that comes up again later. Um, but regarding this thing, I mean, yeah, I, here's the thing. Some of this is true in that sometimes people, I have seen tweets where people say, oh, this person is a crisis actor and like, there's no evidence of it. That's, and that's not, that's untrue. But the same Yeah, all token, that is like the new thing. Right. To call but everyone this, a crisis actor. Yes, exactly. Exactly. But the same token, just as, just as I've seen videos of people point to Palestinians that are dead and called them Israelis or, you know, whatever, I've, I've seen lots of accounts 
posting pictures of you know people that died in Syria, you know from this from Assad killing them and from you know the, the whole Syrian civil war situation. Posting those saying that they're that these are Palestinians that Israelis are killing. I have seen uh, pictures of people holding baby dolls and pretending that they're children. So the propaganda exists on both sides here. And you're just naively stupid and deluding yourself if you don't think that's the case. Right, yeah. If if you think your side is not using propaganda, but the other side is exclusively using propaganda, you're a fool. Yeah, it's just <laughs> silly. It's 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 truly dystopian. It makes you it makes you feel like are are we living in the same world? Like how <laughs> how can someone like stand and say these things and perpetuate these things when we're seeing it with our own eyes. We're seeing the reality that is in Gaza and we're seeing the reality that is in in Tel Aviv and the rest of Israel. When it, it's not just Gaza that isn't safe. We haven't even touched on the West Bank and Israeli citizens who were, who are of Palestinian descent being arrested in their homes simply for for standing in solidarity with children who are being murdered in their own homes. It's it's lunatic. It's twisted beyond belief. And, and I think that really strikes to the heart of why you are such a threat, because we're talking about like, especially like Gen Z, you know, millennials, Gen Z, people know what the hell's going on. You look at even like polling for just support for Israel. It's it's exactly the same thing. And I don't think it it's necessarily just distrust in corporate media, um, although I do think that that has a huge role to play. I think that, you know, people who grew up, especially in a post 9-11 world, it's like, that. that's just like the meme. It's like the media lies us into war over and over again. So why would you believe them now? But I think more important. This is an important thing that, you know, I've always tried to, to focus on, which is that obviously here, we've talked a lot about how the mainstream media uh, has lied or has been very dishonest about certain things usually, you know, in the realms of politics, you know, things, you know, when, when I try to give something a political slant, you know, very often it's framed in a very dishonest way. Um, of course. The problem is this kind of leads some people to very lazy thinking where they say, well, if the like, quote, mainstream media, which again, we say mainstream media, you're, you're, saying all of you know the left wing media all of the right wing media um you kind of put them all into a giant box and you say well the mainstream media is dishonest so therefore automatically whenever they say anything about any story i'm just going to automatically assume number one it's untrue and just take the opposite position that's just as stupid and lazy as just assuming everything they say is true yeah of course could be could be true it could be false you have to look in right you have to actually take the time to look at the story and say well let me try to read this and see what's going on here and see that you know some of the telltale signs of whether it seems believable or not is it too on the nose is it quoting anonymous sources blah 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 they just look at something and say well the the mainstream media says it, so it must automatically be the opposite of that that's that's going to lead you down a pathway of not of just of just taking you to stupid land, which apparently I guess Abby is on board with, I guess, currently, though I suspect it's really only like most people. It's just I read an article that confirms my bias. It's true. I read an article that goes against my pre-confirmed uh, notions, my preconceived notions of reality. It must be fake news, which is I'm assuming how Abby just interprets this stuff, considering how she's talking about it. That is most people. That is the way most people consume media. Obviously, if it's if it's against what they want to believe, then then it's fake news. If it's exactly what they want to believe, then all of a sudden, the paper that they've been castigating as getting it wrong every single time is you know a reputable source now that right. it agrees with me. So right, yeah. But look, it takes a long time. I mean, most of the time I'm forcing myself just to have an agnostic position on this kind of stuff because I don't know much about it. That's see, but that's the problem yeah. is that that it's uncomfortable. I think, I think we are wired. We evolved to be uncomfortable, to be agnostic about things. We want to just have like a very clear, decisive attitude psychologically. Um, but I think when you come to a lot of news, especially breaking news, especially political news, 
that's highly tribal, highly controversial, you have to sort of just adopt from the offset an agnostic opinion on everything and just start from that position. Because otherwise, it's just too easy for you to get suckered into believing something. I am noticing, because it does it does come up time and time again, there's all these these words that people are using in this discussion, apartheid state, open air prison, concentration camp. So look, I'm an agnostic on those terms because I'm looking for their justification, their reasoning behind it. And the people that most commonly use those terms never give any kind of justification. It's like, yes, please give me some examples. But I am, I am reading books on on the situation i am coming across things horrible things that the israel the israelis have done to palestinians mm -hmm. horrible things palestinians have done to israelis so i i mean the more i read on this the more i think well nobody's hands are clean here <laughs> it doesn't yeah. seem like really anyone is the sweet innocent oh i didn't do anything wrong uh no one can kind of claim that moral high ground status so right. i just like what are you gonna do uh, obviously there are things look the 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 hamas attacks are 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 detestable like there's just there's no excuse for that i, I keep asking myself okay even if you can come up with justifications for this apartheid state and i guess apartheid state is just defined as two populations living with different laws one law for one population, one law for another. I guess Jim Crow would be the best example in the America context, right? Mm -hmm. Is is that is is that a situation where you can go off indiscriminately and murder and and kill and and no. maim and rape innocent innocent people? I don't no. think it is, <laughs> right? Yeah, and well, that's. Yeah. Well, apartheid is also, it's, it's different than slavery. I've heard like the Finkelstein guy compla compared it to actual slavery, like not just Jim Crow, but slavery. So, you, I mean, you're taking these incremental steps away from, from just abhorrent situations. Things are progressively getting better and better. And I, my read of the situation is every time violence breaks out, you take giant steps away from the incremental improvements towards a better situation. You know, it's an interesting question that all these people are too cowardly or stupid to have to actually have a conversation about is, you know, what, if anything, is there any possible scenario where like just raping and killing innocent civilians would ever be morally, ethically justified? Right. Under, That's the conversation I want to have. <laughs> like, right. Any, yeah. Under like a normative, like a normal, not insane moral system. Um, and I, you know, the only thing I could even maybe think of, and I wouldn't even be sure this is like, if you have, because I've said on the stream, I said that like, you know, Norman and the other people, they try to say like, oh, these people broke out of a concentration camp. Right. Right. And I, and I remember when I heard that, I said, okay, first of all, that's not true at all. But even if it was true, if I were to grant that that was true, that like literally these people in Gaza are living in the same circumstances as like Jews in a concentration right, camp. Yeah. They that broke out of Auschwitz. Right. If Jews broke out of Auschwitz and started just killing and raping like every German they could find. Why, Innocent that Germans, yeah. Yeah, like and children, like that wouldn't be justified. I, that, even that wouldn't be justified during the Holocaust. I don't know why that like would be here, you know, justified here. When it's not now, even if, a, they were, it's if they were beheading the prison guards, okay, now we're having a right. conversation. Right? <laughs> like right. They, they're literally the people oppressing them. Yeah, and I was, I was like really stretching hard to like try to figure out some like way that this would be justified. Um, I couldn't really think of one. I couldn't really conceive of like why would this would ever be justified unless it was some like ridiculous scenario, you know, like an evil deity says you must commit these actions or I'll kill all life on the planet, you know, some like absurd thing that's not like realistic. And they never actually have the conversation about that. They never actually explain their rationale here. They can't. That's why, look, as soon as they start talking about this in any detail, they realize that their whole worldview falls apart. That's the problem. Yeah. Well, it's interesting because one of the big things you would hear against, or that would be used against Israel, say Israel is engaged in collective punishment, punishment uh, 
with the bombings in Gaza. Uh, and if that's, if there do, if there's proof of that, which right, there right. might be, I look, I don't right. know. Yeah, At obviously, this point, that, I have no idea. Right. If that turns out to be the case, obviously that is a horrific war crime. Um, but the thing that's interesting to me is that they they for some reason are able to sort of perceive that on Israel, but when it comes to Hamas's actions. They're de- like the fact that that was a quote form of collective punishment. They're going and killing, kidnapping, and raping innocent people that have you know nothing to do with whatever they've suffered. That doesn't perceive to them as some kind of form of fucked up collective punishment. Yeah, it's the same thing. Yeah, it is collective punishment. Not at look. There's, I'm sure, there are people that were murdered on October seventh that voted against Netanyahu that were against the settlers in the West Bank. Oh yeah, there that were, were in favor of people pulling out of Gaza. There were people that were kidnapped who were actively working um, with, you know, Palestinians to try to improve the situation in Gaza, who were killed yeah. and kidnapped. There are multiple people, like hundred, like dozens of people, that reported like were on that side of peace and were just killed or kidnapped. Yeah, I heard uh, different numbers. I think on Tuesday I said. I had heard, read or heard that it was 1,500 work visas. I heard another source that said they were closer to 10,000 work visas. Mm-hmm. So not that yeah. it, not that it's, you, you said it's like 2 million population. So it is pittance, but still, I mean, it's 10 times a thousand. Well, yeah, sure. And you guys, but you gotta start somewhere, obviously. Of course, of right. course. I was listening to another interview with Yusuf. Hassan, the guy who his dad was one of the founding members of Hamas, and he was saying that everybody in Gaza would just kill to live, to immigrate to Israel. <laughs> They're like, right. why, why do I want to live here? I'd, lo- I'd mo- much rather live in Israel where it's nice. Yeah. yeah. Certainly is that Israel's control over the narrative for so long. I mean, this goes back to the clash of civilizations. It goes back to just that that idea that Arabs are terrorists. And it, of course, was cemented further with, with 9-11. But- See, all, all of this is just such simple-minded thinking. It's yeah. like all of this is being driven by their racism against the Palestinian people. <laughs> Yeah. That's that's everything. That's all. This entire situation is just they look at a Palestinian person and they see terrorist. Mm-hmm. Do you really think this situation is that simple, Sitch? No, no, <laughs> um, not even remotely. Well, yes, you know, going back to and this is related. Going back to what I said about how they can see the collective punishment or potential collective punishment that Israel is doing with you know bombing but they're completely blind to the collective punishment of Hamas. I mean, this is just really the most classic example of, you know, your Heidian moral intuitions. The morality binds people into a group and then blinds them. It blinds them to some of the, it blinds, like the dangerous thing about morality and moral systems is that if you're not careful, morality will blind you to the wrongdoings that your in-group does to to the out-group. Yes. Yes. You just it's totally fine. The outgroup does not deserve the same universal rights and moral consideration and weights that your in-group does. And this is, I mean, to me, this is part it, of it's why it's literally I think, apartheid. It's different laws yes. for different people. <laughs> exactly. Exactly. To me, this is part of why the concept of universal rights and natural rights, natural rights under liberalism are just so amazing, such an amazing cultural development, because it's a way to kind of push back against this. I think natural intuition that humans have to just say, listen, they're part of the out group so we can, you know, do whatever we want to them. Yeah. It's, it's more too than just blinding you because of what the way the social system is set up with these purity spirals, even if you are able to see the indiscretions on your side, the social system is constructed that if you speak out against them, people are going to accuse you of being outside of the tribe anyway. So, right. The incentive structure is bad as well. So uh, I think that's one of the chief reasons why evolution has kind of pushed us to just be blind to them, to not be able to see them. A hundred percent. Yeah. I mean, when we saw, you know, it was uh, the week last week or the week before last week where two Palestinians were publicly lynched 
in the West Bank for supposedly, you know, helping, you know, That's being horrible. traitors, supposedly helping Israel in some capacity or something. Really? By so it was Palestinians being lynched by other Palestinians? Yes. Wow. Okay. Publicly. Wow. Wow. Okay. I don't look, I can't remember if I, we talked about it on a Sunday stream or a Tuesday stream, but I had read the the Yusuf Hassan's book. He's the son of one of the founding members of Hamas. And in prison, they did a lot of torturing people because they just, they are so paranoid of traitors that they, they tortured a lot of very, very innocent people and got them to admit to heinous things. And that's just, that's a, that's a huge problem in a situation where people are paranoid. Mm -hmm. Yeah. It says, um, I don't know if any of this has ever been confirmed in terms of the accusation, but uh, the two men, uh, Hamez Mubarak and Asman Jawabra were accused of being, they were confused. They were accused of confessing to serving as informants for the IDF. And so they were, they were killed, dragged through the streets, spit on, and then hung from electric poles where they had their limbs cut off. Oh my God. By a shouting crowd. So, you know. Wow. There you go. Ouch. It's always been a racist, dehumanizing trope that Israeli colonialism and U.S. imperialism has relied on to advance their goals in the Middle East. And this caricature is super successful, but... It's waning, I think, in large part because Americans are like meeting Arabs more. Like we're getting out of our comfort zone. There's a lot of, you know, diaspora of a lot of like refugees around the world. Like a lot of people, their neighbors, their friends, their coworkers, like they're meeting people and they're like, oh, this isn't what I've been told by the media forever. And, and of course, social media, like kids who are following you, all of these kids who are following like iconic, powerful, influential, popular Arab people, whether it's musicians or artists or just like fashion icons, I mean, that's dispelling the myth real time as well. And you can't propagandize to people who are like young because they're seeing it. Okay, th this irony is just <laughs> destroying me, Sitch. <laughs> like, you, you understand the argument that she's making here? She's saying, look, there's this racist stereotype that people believe all Arab people are terrorists. Yeah. And since people are meeting these people who are Arab influencers and, and whatnot, it's dispelling that myth that they're terrorists. Right. Well, she's sitting across from a literal terrorist sympathizer. <laughs> <laughs> what the, what is happening here? Sitch? How is, how is Mia Khalifa dispelling the myth, which I, I agree. It's a terrible, terrible stereotype. But when you sit across from someone who is a literal terrorist sympathizer, it kind of plays into that stereotype a bit. That's a does great, it not? That's a fantastic point. Yeah, look, that's so true. I'm just I'm like, what? Wouldn't it be nice to bring someone on your show that's that's Arab that is a not insane? <laughs> right. And, you know, and, and part of like the thing that is really disgusting about this conversation is like, you know, there's some people that is like, you know, the Mia Khalifa's, the Abby Martins, the Norman Finkelsteins of the world who they're just like horrible people who just basically simp for, they either directly simp for Hamas or indirectly simp for Hamas. Well, I think they're um, useful idiots. I'm not, I'm not certain there's anything going on upstairs in any of these people, to be honest with you. Well, no. So like with like Mia's not a useful idiot. She's like, true believer maybe abby's a useful idiot right but but she's so far in that camp that like norman i basically in my mind group them together in terms of just like horrible people um but then there's there's people and this is a completely legitimate position to have where there are people that think that hamas is a horrific evil uh, organization say that what they did on october 7th was horrific evil but still want to argue um against the Israeli action in Gaza right now and say that, you know, they're killing too many citizens, civilians, they're, you know, causing too much damage, that it's immoral, blah, 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 blah. And like, okay, that's like a, like, we can have a conversation about that. 
you know, and that's a legitimate conversation. It's a legitimate moral position, whether you agree with it or disagree with it. And it's unfortunate that Abby and Mia and all these other psychopaths seem to constantly get kind of so much um, focus from social media and get so many likes, so many retweets, so many views, because what they're saying is so fucking insane. And apparently like having that insane take appeals to the lowest common denominator of so many people on the platform. Yeah, that's what's scary. That's that's what's terrifying, to be honest with you. Mm-hmm. Everyone's basking in this insanity. It's being yeah. propagated. Oh, and also, I just thought it was funny that, like, the irony, too, is that she's like, listen, you know, to these kids, you know, they're not listening to, to the, the media, you know, propaganda. They're following you and listening to your propaganda. <laughs> Right, which I mean, she's getting her propaganda straight from Hamas. So, right, just like fashion icons. I mean, that's dispelling the myth real time as well. And you can't propagandize to people who are like young because they're seeing it for themselves and they're just following these people themselves instead of like what old people are telling them who to hate. <laughs> exactly. Yeah, I mean, they're following Mia herself and seeing Mia's cheer on, you know. Yeah. Hamas kill, kidnap, and rape innocent, you know, Israeli civilians. Yeah. They're seeing it for they, themselves, Abby. They even are deluded on that though, because so many of the people are you know, they're looking for ways to get around the fact that what they did was horrific. Like they don't want to acknowledge that the rapes took place. Even yeah. though there's a bunch of firsthand accounts of of survivors of of the fact that people were being raped. They're not going to film themselves raping women, okay? They they film themselves beheading people. There's plenty of that on film, right? So I I don't. It's like, so they can't deny the beheading, but they're denying the rapes, even though there's firsthand accounts of it. So look, well, I, don't, this... I don't. I think there's plenty of evidence. It's hard to deny, but they they themselves don't want to admit that because they know it's morally reprehensible. Yeah, well, I mean that's kind of the irony here is you have women simping for rape here. Uh, intentionally or unintentionally and you know because they say this in this conversation abby says this in the tim dylan conversation second thoughts insane psychopathic crew brought on some woman to to make a whole case about how there's no evidence for the rape you know or for rape that occurred so i looked into this because i was like okay what like what is the evidence what are they talking about and it's, you know a lot of it is what you're saying there was firsthand accounts of women who witnessed other women being raped one of the uh, more prominent ones was there was a woman at the the music festival who a woman got shot and like like right next to her and died and so she took her blood and smeared it all over her own face and like put the bodies on top of her basically hid under a bunch of dead bodies to survive and she witnessed multiple people uh being raped at the music festival yeah uh, there was multiple and this is kind of why like the people that are are saying that there's no evidence are just so despicable because there was a lot of people after this, you know, after October 7th happened and finally Israel controlled the area again and people were going in, a lot of medical responders, a lot of volunteers were going in to like deal with all the corpses because there's thousands of corpses in this area. And people reported that they would walk into like rooms and they would find a woman, you know, naked handcuffed to the bed with a with her head brains blown out right yeah and it's like oh i wonder what happened in this room and it's like oh well the the first the the person that that found the scene they didn't think to like say hey let me take a fucking photograph of this horrific thing i witnessed because some utter piece of shit on the internet is going to say well pics or it didn't happen like they didn't think to necessarily take a picture of that horrific thing so even, all these even people if they did you think they want those pictures their family want those pictures on the internet these people well, I mean, are fucking that's, disgusting right that is true and supposedly by the way there was a woman who gave a report or she was she was there's a woman who is actually compiling a report of all these claims um and she says that there are first of all she said you're right she said there are pictures of bodies and like this um but a lot of it is just people who found bodies describing the bodies they saw. I guess they're all lying. I guess all the pictures are fake. They actually did do 
some uh, DNA forensic evidence for some of the bodies they found that were raped. They found multiple um, bodies in states that that would obviously imply they were raped. They found multiple bodies, male and female, that had suffered uh, genital mutilation of sorts. And supposedly, and I was listening to what this woman was saying, apparently there's a video of something so horrific that I won't even describe what happened that exists, but I don't think we'll ever see because it's just so like despicable. Um, so yeah, they don't see these people as human beings. The fact the fact that they think they wouldn't rape them. They see yeah. them as animals. They see them as cockroaches. There's like, they'll do whatever they want to them. Yeah. And there was two, at least that I saw, I saw there were two accounts of captured uh, Hamas people that one of them said that they were told that they could do whatever they wanted to the woman by their, whoever was commanding them. Um, and another one was told specifically to like, you know, torture as many people as possible. And so this idea that these like complete idiots have these people who are just so intentionally trying to be blind to this because they hate Israel so much. Like they're so biased so much. They just want to pretend like, Oh yeah, they just went in there and killed a bunch of, you know, you know, thousands of innocent civilians kidnapped, you know, 200 plus civilians, but no, they would never rape anyone. Like that's just beyond, you know, they would never burn anyone alive. That obviously didn't happen. Like these, what these people are insane. They're delusional. They took a bunch of women and they haven't returned the women. They return like the old people. Well, see, that was an interesting the thing fuck? too that I was wondering about because so this is a somewhat of a tangent, but so there was a ceasefire obviously recently. And they yeah, were doing hostage days, ex right? ex exchange. Yeah. They're doing hostage exchange and everything. And then what's interesting or weird is that it was Hamas that that broke the ceasefire. Hamas, the people that were begging for the ceasefire, they were launching, they started launching rockets and there was a person that, that dr did a drive-by shooting on a bunch of Israelis in a terrorist attack and Hamas said that that was our guy. They admitted that they were behind that attack. So Hamas is very clearly intentionally ending the ceasefire. And I don't know if anyone said this. I mean, I wouldn't be surprised because it doesn't seem to me to be big far out there because my first thought when they were re returning uh, hostages was, you know, they're returning children and they're returning old people. And I saw that there were some young women that were being returned, but I was wondering, because you know if there's a young woman who has been raped and is a hostage. They can't return them. She will never be returned. Yeah. She will never be returned. And I was actually wondering if maybe the reason that Hamas intentionally broke the ceasefire because they can't return any of them they raped them all is because yeah because they wanted Israel was saying you know you need to give us back the women you said you're going to give us back the women and they maybe have reached a point where they literally cannot return any more female hostages because they've all suffered sexual assault it's so disgusting and the and fact yet, look it's yeah. so disgusting that these two idiots these fucking morons these people who sit in the West and talk about women's rights are on this podcast talking about this just completely delusional, basically yes. spreading fucking lies. Yes. When there's all those people over there that are suffering, look, they're probably still getting raped. I'm sure. I'm sure. Yeah. They even, you know, and she says, I don't remember if it was in this conversation. I, I think it was actually the Tim Dillon one, because this might have been before the ceasefire. She says like, oh, you know, from what we've heard, like, they they treated the prisoners well. Yeah, uh, and I'm like, what, what are you? What did you hear? I don't know what she's bullshit. talking about. Because like when I was like when I looked into the stories, it was like, first of all, it's like okay, so they had a bunch of people who were basically living in a room for 50 days on like the most meager food possible, like to just survive. Okay, in some horrid conditions, many times there was like no light, barely any light. They just sit in a room of of you know sweltering heat for all this entire time. Some of the people were physically abused. Some of the kids were intentionally uh, branded accordingly. That, that at least two kids said that they intentionally put their legs on like a hot motor pipe, like a hot motorcycle pipe to brand them so they could be identified if they ran away. Um, there were kids that were covered in like lice and other bugs. There were kids who supposedly were forced to watch, you know, some of the October 7th footage. Oh my God. Um, there were, you know, like people that got these kids talk about how like the kids 
are obviously like completely traumatized and like seem like completely different like children than they were before, obviously. And how some of them like are like, like they're just so like they're afraid to speak. Like they're just so quiet now and everything because, you know, they're saying that like they weren't allowed to talk or because the guards would threaten to kill them. It like you have these children who, by the way, all, you know, most of these kids that were held hostage, their families died on October 7th. Their parents well, and siblings got killed and murdered, and then they were held hostage for 50 days, and this dumb uh, idiot, Abby Martin, is like, well, you know, they were held in good conditions. Who who knows what they told them? Uh, they're probably terrified to speak because they said, if you say anything, we're going to hunt you down and kill you. Right. They're yeah. probably terrified to say anything to the authorities. Yes. It's, it's so sick. It's just, it's wild to me. But, you know, whatever. Listen, Israel bad, I guess. America bad, right? Hi, you just listened to a clip from the Sitch and Adams show. If you like what you heard, you can listen to our live show right here on this channel on Sunday, starting at 1 p.m. Pacific, 4 p.m. Eastern. And if you want, you can super chat us. We read $20 and up super chats on the show and then do a follow-up stream on the following Tuesday where we read the rest of the unread super chats and interact with fans of the show. Subscribe to this channel right here to listen to the live show or to listen to more of our awesome clips.